Okay. Copying is not the same as theft, but that's not what today's media wants you to think. I'm sure that many of you have heard stories about how it's wrong to download music, videos, etc. online. Presently, the U.S. government gives Congress the authority to grant copyrights by saying that the Congress shall have the power to promote the science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. But is this such a good idea? Today, it is my goal to convince you to reconsider your opinion on how copyright laws are in the U.S. And I will convince you, hopefully, to think that we need to either abolish it or, at the very least, seriously reform it. Although I would use multiple sources, most of, of the facts that I will tell you come from the nonprofit organization QuestionCopyright.org. I'll tell you why current copyright laws are not correct in their thinking, answer some frequently asked questions, and show how removing copyright laws can actually increase creativity. To begin with, content is an unlimited resource. People can make perfect copies of digital content for free. In the instance of ideas, the content that we're referring to is not tangible. And our own thoughts cannot be given to other people, though they can be shared. They are not property. This is why it's been called intellectual property. Now, containers, such as books, disks, hard drives, etc., are limited resources. These containers add utility and increase the value of content. No one expects these objects to be free. The containers are tangible. They are physical objects and property. Let me give you another example with water. When you pay for a water bill, you're not actually paying for the water itself, you're paying for a service. Now, although water is tangible, it is similar to air in that there is enough of it to go around. And people would find the idea of selling just regular air ridiculous. If you are okay with getting water for free in a public river, great. But for most of us, we want water to be cleaned and transported to our homes, which is a service. In a similar way, the service of creating money or playing music should still cost money. Now, I'm sure some of you are asking yourself some questions. I'm going to try to answer them. You may ask, wasn't copyright invented by writers and artists to protect themselves? And the answer is actually no. If you look at history, it shows that the first political act that somewhat resembled modern copyright laws had quite a different goal than securing the artist's income. It was created by Queen Anne in 1557 when she granted the Stationers Guild a monopoly on printing and publishing books, a monopoly which conveniently banned all competition from printers in other parts, such as other countries or rival Scotland. In fact, the term copyright says all what it is. It is the exclusive right to copy of any particular work. Nowhere in early copyright was any mention made of an author or artist who produced the work. Queen Anne was not overly fond of the concept of a free press. And granting the Stationers Guild the exclusive right to publishing books gave her full control over which books could be published and which were banned from the market. This act by Queen Anne is what the modern copyright law has been founded on. Thus, copyright is not really about subsidizing creation, but about subsidizing replication. And it was designed around the dominant replication technology of its time, the printing press. Another question you may ask is, don't musicians, writers, and artists depend on copyright to earn a living? Proponents of copyright law will say that they do. However, the vast majority of musicians, writers, and artists will never see a dime of copyright royalties in their work. For the small percentage who do, it is only a nice consolation prize and hardly enough to make a real difference in their life. The copyright lobbyists like to talk about the superstars, the very tiny majority of famous artists whose works are backed by the publishing power of the marketing record industry. While there's nothing objectionable about these superstars, some of whom are very <coughs> talented, treating them as representative artists in general would be to confuse marketing with reality. Most artists' lives look nothing like this, and never will, under the current copyright system. For the question of how artists would get credit for their work, it is important to note that sharing is not the same as plagiarism. That still would still be wrong, if laws were to change. And finally, would creativity dry up without copyright? This would be a more compelling argument if there were no worthwhile creative works created before copyright, such as Shakespeare, Leonardo da Vinci, Bach, etc. <coughs> the history of human cultural production shows no evidence that creativity somehow depends on restraining it, its works. Now, what are the benefits of not having copyright? Besides the obvious easy access to many materials, and 
and how fans of a particular work would be able to easily publish their fan-related works that they created. It will also be, there will also be more creative works be, that weren't being produced before. You see, companies today owning massive amounts of copyright works can, at their whim, ban weaker cultural activities, not only from the marketplace, but also from the general audience's attention. This is a tremendous loss to our democratic society, because our democratic world needs a diversity of cultural expressions to truly thrive. In addition, it will also save companies money on advertising, as people will be more willing to share works with other people. And it may also in encourage accurate attribution, because when there are many copies available, a quick internet search reveals who the true author is. So now you have a better idea of how copyright works currently, and some of the benefits of abolishing it. I ask you now just to rethink how you perceive copyright to be, because the media's, with the media's current rhetoric on copyright, people don't even consider abolishment of it. The creative world depends on people being informed. Now,